All right. Hello, 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 everyone. I am Rosalind Brown of Your Wealth Guidance, where we help Black women create their financial independence map and identify the tools for success so you can live life on your own terms. Thank you so much. If you are joining us for the first time and if you are returning, we are so glad to have you back with us today. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification so you never miss another Great Money Monday. Today, we have a great guest. I'm so excited about this guest because I had a great chat with her weeks and weeks ago. And as she was talking, I love when I see Black women do like a thousand great things because that is what we do. So we have Dr. B. Thomas. She is an NFT artist. I know some of y'all like, what is, I don't know exactly. We're going to learn about that. Her work was featured at San Diego's first NFT conference on April of 2022. She is renowned for her published research study of success factors of African-American female entrepreneurs and her achievement as a cannabis entrepreneur. Now we already talked about that, but y'all better get on that too. She is an author, professor, speaker, and phenomenally successful African-American woman business owner. She is a professional business educator with a specialty in teaching adult learners, an Air Force veteran, formal federal police officer, and college professor. Shall we do it all? <laughs> she started her first company in 2007 and since then has been instrumental in consulting NFT artists, launching several businesses, cannabis dispensaries, and multiple CBD brands and stores. She also helped launch the highest rated dispensary in San Diego, taking it from zero to $2.5 million in under six months. That's two commas, y'all, on that one. <laughs> and $6 million in sales in just one year. In addition to supporting, educating, and mentoring entrepreneurs with every chance she gets, she has also created a number of charities helping women, children, and at-risk youth. Now, if y'all ain't impressed, <laughs> somebody say, I want to be like her when I grow up. Yes. <laughs> you and me both. If y'all ain't impressed, I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Y'all need to get it together. But Dr. B, when you were telling me, I was like, I, I got to get on this. Like, what? Y'all, my dog's snoring in the background. Y'all got that. There we <laughs> Ain't ready for NMT. But, um, but when we were talking, this is this is the untapped market in terms of knowledge base, in terms of what people know, how people are in it. But the money is there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The money is there. And this is the perfect time. Like we were chatting. First of all, thank you for having me before I even get into this. Um, I'm so honored to be your guest. Thank you to your audience. I really appreciate this opportunity to share and to have this moment, this is like, you know, a, a, this is like a fellowship type moment for me. So thank you for having me. Love it. I'm so happy that you're here. I love, I love greatness. And I love to highlight so many Black women that are doing things that are untapped because we belong in every single room. And Absolutely. this is room is not enough of us in and we got to get there. So, I mean, Adrian, you want to be like her. We all want to be like her. So we got to figure out how to get into some of these rooms that is not as many of us in today. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think there's a quote in my book where I say something like, it's not enough for us to just be at the table. We need to own the table, the building and the block. Absolutely. And that includes within this NFT space. And that's not saying anything to take anything away from anyone else. It's simply suggesting that we also deserve to have representation within this particular um, new universe that, you know, that it really is a new universe. We're talking about Web3. So Web3 is beyond, you know, where we are now in Web2. It's all about decentralization. It's all about ownership. And it's very important that we have a piece of the pie there, most definitely. Now, tell us a little bit about kind of where we are. So Web2, what is that? And, you know, most people are more familiar with it, maybe not exactly what it says. But then what is the difference going from Web2 to Web3? Oh, yeah. Well, there's a big difference between Web2 and Web3. You don't own anything on these Internet streets in Web2. You know, it's owned by corporations. It's owned by powers that are beyond you. Yet in the Web3 space, you start to see ownership and you become an individual that actually owns 
whatever you put out there in these internet streets. For example, once you create an NFT, you have ownership of an NFT. Once you create an NFT within the Web3 space. And I know I'm going to be shouting out some terms. I'm going to do my best to break down these definitions. As we were talking about earlier, when you enter into this, this Web3 space, this metaverse, there's a lot of things that you must know, and I feel like education is critical. So anyway, Web3 space, the big thing about it is decentralization. That is a term that you will hear spread around uh, very much so. And essentially, that's about um, individuals having ownership of um, what they put out there in the Internet streets. For example, an NFT, an NFT is a non-fungible token, so, token. So an NFT is essentially like owning a piece of exclusive art. And you can put this art on the Web3 space and it gets added to something called a blockchain. And essentially a blockchain is like a digital database that has that assigns your art maybe a particular number, for example, three, three, seven, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that particular art is filed under that that uh, digital key. And essentially anyone that buys that piece of art, now they own that within the metaverse. So metaverse is always is all about ownership. Web3 is all about ownership. It's about placing powers in the hands of the people versus large corporations. And so that is why it is huge. Now, in terms of, I know people are so concerned about copyright and things, you know, Beyonce just came out and they're talking about who own and who that, like, how do you claim ownership? How do you protect your ownership? for some of these NFTs that exist out there? Well, what's really interesting about this space, just like, you know, coming from the cannabis space is that you have, now you have experts. So just to refresh people's minds and maybe people might not know this, but in the cannabis for, uh, in space, for example, you'll have cannabis accountants now, cannabis attorneys now. And now you're seeing the same thing happen within the NFT space where you're having NFT attorneys now, NFT accountants now, people who are specializing in this particular industry. So one of the ways that you protect yourself is similar to how you would protect yourself within the Web2 space, within this particular dimension that we live in, um, making sure that your business is registered, making sure that you you have ownership of the art because that can be an issue. You can't post someone else's art as an NFT, for example, within the Web3 space and actually claim ownership because you're stealing someone else's art. So you have to make sure that you are the original owner of that art before you post it in that um, in the digital space. So another thing about security um, that must be recognized is, again, things are recorded on something called the blockchain. So essentially, if you if once someone purchases purchases your NFT art, for example, that places it on the blockchain, which automatically time stamps it, dates it, and says, now all of a sudden this person is the owner of XZ567856. And that is something that is permanent throughout perpetuity, which is really unique, actually. So it does, in a sense, provide an extra level of safety because of the blockchain, because of everything being documented. Yet at the same time, you want to make sure that you take steps to protect yourself as a creator within this space. Now, what kind of art is on um, or is available for purchase? So if you're, you know, making cartoons or if you got stick figures or if you're creating memes, like what kind of things could an art, an NFT artist create? Oh, very good question. I get that all the time and I really love answering it because essentially, you know, you you have freedom as an artist to create essentially any type of NFT you like. Just think about the art that you can create in this particular dimension. Anything that can be created in this reality in the Web 2 space can also be created in the Web 3 space. For example, you know, if you're um, an author, you can create an NFT book. If you're a dancer, you can create NFT choreography. If oh, wow. you're a videographer, you can create NFT videography. Myself, you know, I created an NFT music video and an, an NFT music, which is something that you're seeing really uh, become popular 
these days. It's, it's an exciting time to join this type of industry because essentially the sky is the limit as far as what you can create as an artist. So it gives you the opportunity to be super creative. There are people who are even creating uh, these metaverses, these different realities essentially within the Web3 space clubs, for example, meditation rooms, for example, within the Web3 space. I mean, it's really, it's mind blowing. Now, so when you're creating these, how are you marketing them? So you're marketing your music video, you're marketing your art or your choreography. Where are you marketing them? And then are people renting them or purchasing them for their own personal use? Yeah, I love to have this conversation about marketing because Essentially, you know, uh, depending on what industry you're in, you might choose different marketing strategies. And so within this Web3 space, it's very important for you to be involved within Twitter, for example, because a lot of the artists, a lot of the people who are interested in the, in the Web3 platform, are they tend to be on Twitter. So Twitter is one way to market your NFTs. Another way to market your NFTs is to be part of something called Discords. A Discord is a community that's often used by people who are interested in this NFT world. And so you would essentially join their community. You have to be involved. This is one of those spaces where it really pays to network and you have to know exactly where you are networking. So essentially, again, Twitter, again, being part of people's discords um, and also backing up the choo-choo choo-choo train, like I like to say, knowing why you're creating this art, who you're targeting with your art in the first place will also give you a better idea of how to how to market and where to market to. You have to know where your target audience is hanging, where they are, where they where they where they gather, where they get their information, where they spend their time at. Now, are there some industries that are more immersed in the NFT space than others? So is it just tech or maybe some of the more traditionals in terms of like education? Is there one industry that's like, yes, this is 100 percent. You need to know this and be in this space and others that are just kind of being pulled along. No, that's a very good question, too. Yet, like the cannabis space, at least what we what we saw in the beginning, everybody and their grandmother, <laughs> every industry you can think about is finding a way where they can be involved in this space, whether they be a tech industry, whether they be a, a brick and where they just have a regular brick and mortar, whether they be an e-commerce industry. It really doesn't matter. People are now thinking decentralization they're thinking web three they're thinking beyond where we are now web two which was a, a wonderful invention and so they're thinking about how they can be a part of this new world and how they could get their business to uh, incorporate more web three models and then are there when you're looking at pricing so you've created something you got some music you're doing whatever that is you've created something how are you pricing? So how do you know, okay, this I can sell for a thousand versus this I need to sell for $2. How do you know what the market would handle? Well, that's really a very good question once again, because just like in the cannabis space, especially in the CBD space in the beginning, you saw that the prices were all over the, the map because again, it's a new industry. People are kind of, some people are, you know, uh, doing what they want. You know, some people are charging less, some people are charging more. Again, I think that goes back to knowing your target audience in the first place. And if once you know your target audience, one of the ways that you can analyze your target audience is a demographic. And so in that demographic information, you would essentially be finding out how much money, you know, your target audience makes per year and how much are they willing to maybe spend on or uh, invest in art, for example. And so that might help you to create some sort of a pricing uh, framework. Nevertheless, there is no particular strategy. And what we have to remember, too, also within this digital world is that we are dealing with cryptocurrency. <laughs> so we're, we're not dealing with the fiat notes that we're accustomed to, which, again, that goes back to this um, this education piece that has to be uh, 
disseminated to, to, to everyone, especially those who are often marginalized. This is why it's very important for us to be having this conversation. Now, you talked about crypto and, and working on somebody to come in and talk a little bit about crypto investing and so forth. But so, OK, you you have this piece of art that you're going to sell. Are there multiple ways in order to purchase? So is it I'll take your credit card, I'll take your crypto, I'll take <laughs> your cash app. Like, are there, <laughs> or is there just one particular way? So do you need to set up this kind of portal in order to accept compensation? That's so funny, you know. Um, when you were saying, "I'll take your, I'll take your credit card, I'll take your cash," you know, whatever, whatever you got, I'll take it. Um, no, essentially, in this space, you are using digital currency in order to participate uh, in 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 buying and even um, uploading your NFT art in something. Um, like, for example, you can upload it into OpenSea. OpenSea is one of the largest platforms that individuals use to upload their NFT art. Yet, essentially, before you would do that, you need to create uh, something called a digital wallet. So we're working in digital currency. We're working um, in, with digital wallets when we're talking about participating and buying art within a Web3 space. So unfortunately, right now, no, there, there is no, uh, you can't purchase it, you know, with a credit card or, you know, or how other, using other methods, you essentially, you would have to use cryptocurrency. And see, that's a good thing, too, in terms of, okay, you're setting this up. So one, you, you need to have some way in order to accept cryptocurrency and understand that space just a tad bit, at least. But when you say uploading, where are we uploading this information to? Um, it's not, you know, to our social media or what have you, but where are some of the places that we're actually uploading and moving this information to? So, for example, there are different types of uh, wallets that you can create online, and, and that's how you would essentially get your crypto while it started like there's different companies where you can create your crypto wallet and you could start by adding crypto to your wallet and once you have that wallet then you would go on some a platform like OpenSea for example if you just start decided you wanted to create art on OpenSea and OpenSea would connect to your digital wallet whatever company you decided to work with in order for you to actually start um uploading your art onto OpenSea. OpenSea is an online platform that you could use, for example, to upload your art. That's exactly where you would place how much, you know, your art is going to be listed for, et cetera, et cetera. But essentially, yeah, you have to have that connection between your digital wallet and also the platform that you're going to be using to upload your NFT. And these are two critical pieces in order for you to participate in creating NFTs. Now, if you wanted to purchase an NFT, you could also go on OpenSea, for example, and you could look, but you would still need to have a digital wallet online elsewhere to connect to that particular um, OpenSea site in order for you to purchase that art. Now, I talk all about that in my course and how you can set up your, your digital wallet and all of these things, because these are critical pieces in order for you to participate within this space. You need to, you need to have a knowledge of, of crypto a little bit in order for you to participate. And so you have the course. So we just talked about... Um, and of course, um, Rye Tree, am I saying your name right? Girl, let me know if I'm saying that right. Um, but one of the things, so you talk about your course, tell us about this course, because I am big on getting information. So we give you information here free. So y'all better suck this free information. Up. Um, ask as many questions as you can for free. But then if you want to go further, pay for quality information. So tell us about what people get from the course, who are actually signing up for the course, um, and kind of what that looks like, even from a time commitment perspective. Oh, absolutely. So uh, one thing that I love doing is creating information that people could, they can take in at their own leisure. And so they can educate themselves. And I feel like courses are very important. Courses are not obsolete, especially for African-American women who, according to you research, we gravitate to, to bettering ourselves through education. And so why not 
uh, have a course that's catered to you, that's speaking directly to you, and that uh, gives you the information that you need in order for you to learn about this particular topic in the comfort of your own home. So this course is about an hour long, which I love because it's for those who actually, maybe you don't have a lot of time, but you still want to know how do I participate in this? Like if I'm interested, I'm an artist, I'm interested in creating my own art. I want to create my first NFT. Well, how do I create my NFT? And then beyond that, how do I sell my first NFT? So essentially the course teaches you this whole process and it's taught by one of my clients who actually is an NFT artist. We were talking about this before the show and her art was just featured in Times Square just a few weeks ago, at, I mean, in New York. So you know, this this young lady is doing phenomenal work. She's a, a Web3 artist and creates virtual art. So, yes, we walk you through the process of setting up a wallet in the first place. We use a lot of terminology and give you a lot of definitions so that you again, you're becoming immersed into this new world and you're you're doing it at your own leisure. So Another thing that comes along with the course, again, is information on how to, what groups you need to be a part of, uh, like, for example, Twitter, for example, Discord, and there's other keys within this course as well. In addition to that, you get a call with me where I go over, you know, what are some of your objectives and some of your goals with the art that you wish to create and how do you want to essentially develop your business around your art. So looking just beyond art and figuring out how to develop uh, a more of a business framework for your NFT. I think that's real. So when we talk about like the step by step by step, and so just an hour, everybody got an hour. Yeah. Um, and retreat. Thank you, girl, for sounding that out for me. I hate when people mispronounce my name. So I'm always like, listen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so the, the step by step. Now, one question I have. So if you're not artsy and so, you you know, you all hear draw and stick figures and so forth. Can you still be an NFT artist? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like everyone has the ability to be creative. You know, maybe uh, maybe you're not artsy, but maybe you you're a writer or maybe you know, you have a, a business that somehow you want to incorporate within Web3, maybe within your business, you you decide to sell, I don't know, uh, like a coffee mug, for example, you can put a copy of the coffee mug, create an NFT out of that. And then all of a sudden you're creating a community of people online that can support you and what you do. I feel like you need to think outside of the box. It's not just for people who have the ability to paint. It's not for Picassos and, and all of that. It's for people who are willing to think big and people who are willing to ask themselves, how can I be creative within this space? How can I expand my business within the Web3 space? There's even people who are doing podcasts within this space. So, I mean... <laughs> It's like everything. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So the sky really is the limit as, as to what you can do. And you don't have to be a certain type of artist in order to succeed. I think that's great because I think sometimes when we hear artists, or especially I'm going to say when I hear artists, I'm like, yeah, I don't draw nothing good. <laughs> I sing really well in the shower. <laughs> So we're talking about like art forms. What do I have to contribute? And so it's good to know that you can run the full gamut in terms of people who are not quote unquote artsy to actually still be an NFT artist. Now, in terms of what are some of the softwares people are using? So it, I'm guessing we aren't just like drawing in notebooks. Like what are some of the softwares that people are using to create this artwork that then would go on like an open sea or what have you? Oh, well, you know, people are using all sorts of different software. You know, um, I know one of my friends who is an NFT artist, she simply uses her, you know, her pad, her iPad and, you know, the little pencil and does her little her her artwork there. 
another one of my friends who is an NFT artist and the client that I'm talking about, she uses the Oculus and actually creates art, 3D art in real time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she does performances where she creates the art in real time. And the performance is part of her, the art in itself because she's dancing and then she's creating this 3D sculpture in real time. I know it's crazy. It's crazy. So she's using the Oculus. And then myself, for example, you know, um, I'm not using any particular uh, softwares that are anything uh, unfamiliar. You know, I just I, for example, I did a music video. So I hired a videographer, a cinematographer, et cetera, et cetera, and who were able to just post it online, you know, and, and just using YouTube. People are creating wow. NFT videos from their YouTube videos. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> so there are they taking that so when the video is posted, so today's video can then be an NFT. Are they just posting it in the raw or is there something else that they're doing to it? And then does that cut off access from kind of that primary source? So if you posted a cute picture online and you're like, actually, I want to make this an NFT, can you no longer have that posted online? No, you can have it posted in multiple platforms, you know, and that's what some people do, you know, and, and, and no, you know, uh, well, you could do something special to the video if you want to, but it's not required. You know, there are people who say, okay, this YouTube video is going to be an NFT. It's going to be posted as an NFT. And then all of a sudden that person who buys it, they become an owner of that NFT, which is completely different than having that video on YouTube, for example, because now that person is, they're in the metaverse, they're in the blockchain, they own something into perpetuity, they have access to it. Now, what does that mean? Why, why, would any, why does anybody care? I think it depends on uh, the, the person that creates the art. You know, again, you could build your community by creating art on the internet. You can build your community by maybe, maybe you share some of your revenue with the people that buy your art. Maybe, again, you give them access to maybe a once a year conference that you have. You give them tickets. You give them, you give them things. You give them um, opportunities for them to advance themselves within the Web3 space as well. So this is more than just creating art. It's really about creating a community of people and creating a revolution within the space. I love it. I, I thinking about like how big the potential is that exists. Like I definitely I think sometimes we have these limited beliefs and we're like, that's for the geeks and the nerds. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if I could do this. And it's like people are buying this artwork that you may already be creating. So yeah. if you're already, you know, singing on the internet, if you're already playing an instrument, if you're already like, oh, I have some sort of art or class or information, all of those things could then be an NFT. Absolutely. Absolutely. And is this something that you could create an NFT business or are these people that are just selling kind of one offs in terms of the NFT, NFT space? Well, that's a great question. Um, and you can, and the answer really is either or. You know, I'd like to go back to what you said earlier about, you know, this being for nerds. Yeah. You know, <laughs> to the nerds out there <laughs> it's funny because i consider myself i finally have i have accepted that i am i am a nerd and i love nerds and i'm here for it i've accepted it by myself <laughs> but having said that you know snoop dogg is in this space and so you know he has released nft art nft music so, I mean, wherever he is, you know, he has such a, an entrepreneurial mind, a very beautiful mind. Nevertheless, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Because I think it's, it, things always seem kind of further out. And we talked about, we actually had a speaker last week talking about real estate. And things always seem so further out in terms of the amount of investment. So even if someone said, I want to get started, how much do I need in order to get started? So is this something that someone could do and say... All I have is my laptop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can you can start exactly where you are. 
And I think that's a, a unique thing about this space. I would start simply by getting educated about it. That is where you start. And there is a lot of information online that you could find, you know, regarding this space. Nevertheless, the point is to start, you know, and, and don't let that be an excuse don't feel like you need to have a certain amount of money in order to get started because it costs it costs nothing to to start doing research you know it costs nothing to investigate you know so now is open c similar to like an ebay so is it you're paying to list or are you getting kind of a percentage of what you sell is it something like that when we think about a comparison well they have their fee you know, and essentially you pay your fee when you sign up, you know, to be a part of OpenSea. But OpenSea is just an example of one platform that could be used to distribute your NFT art. You know, you might decide to use another platform. They're uh, creating platforms for different types of art now. So, for example, if you're a, a person that creates music, there may be a better platform than OpenSea for you to actually share your music, where again, you could give maybe share your revenue with other writers, share your revenue with other people who were part of your song, for example. It really opens the door uh, for artists to have more control. Now, are there any cons or downside things like fraud or people stealing other people's kind of information or maybe people buying it and then reusing it or reselling it? Are there any kind of downsides to the NFT market? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. You know, just like in the cannabis space where, you know, there's an opportunity to to make a lot of money and serve a lot of people. There are people who have different intentions, you know, within the NFT space, same thing. There are people who come here and, you know, they're interested in, in uh, robbery. They're interested in scamming. And so you have to be mindful of the scammers. You know, um, one of the things that's a very important is, you know, writing down your security codes and all of that, keeping these things in a safe place, uh, not clicking on websites that attempt to bait you to get you get information from you, et cetera, et cetera. I talk about some security things that you want to look out for in the course as well. This is important because there are people who do get scammed and there are people who do, you know, that's that's what their job is. I mean, that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, have, you know, so they're doing your, their job. So therefore, you have to be really careful about, you know, um, participating, participating in this space as well. Now, is there a chance to lose your information? So if you've created something, can you lose it? Can you lose the rights to your artwork or to your music or can someone else buy it and now they start making money from it? Does that exist? Well, I'm sure that, you know, there are people who have managed to scam the system and, and, and figure that out yet, essentially because everything is recorded within the blockchain, it's very difficult for a person to um, try to take someone someone's art and pretend like it's their art, although this does happen. But it's kind of silly because, again, everything is recorded within this digital database. So there is a record of things. Um, is it possible to lose things? Yes, I suppose anything is possible because systems could shut down, things could break down, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yet I also think it's important for you to have a backup of anything that you do, you know, just like I would in the Web2 space. I love it. And then just thinking about NFTs and it's a community, mm -hmm. how many people like us... <laughs> Mm -hmm. are part of the community? How many people are in the community today? And is it even where there is like a Black community of NFT artists? Yes. Well, you will be surprised to know that we are there. Um, and I'm super proud of us for being there. I mean, you know, we're we're ahead of the game in so many ways. So there's so many artists that um, are melanated that I have come in contact with at a lot of these NFT events. And we're always happy to see each other. So uh, there's music artists and there's people that create digital art and there's um, uh, melanated people 
that are creating meta metaverses that I've actually been part of their metaverse. Uh, there is a young artist by the name of Nyla who is 11 years old now. I feel like she was nine years old when she became a very popular NFT artist. I own her art. And she, this, this young lady has graced Time Magazine. So, and she is melanated. So having said that, we are most certainly there and we are um, always fighting and striving and growing to, to be recognized in this particular platform. And so that's one of the conversations that we tend to have. Now, uh, in the metaverse, and I don't know how many people y'all can chime in and say, if you're familiar, people are going to say, well, how do I get into the metaverse? Like, where is it? <laughs> Where's the entrance? What's the entrance fee? <laughs> So if somebody's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, or, you know, I don't know where this thing exists. How do people even start to figure out, okay, I just want to look around this metaverse. How would someone do that? Well, first of all, I, if I was a newbie and I was at the beginning of all of this, I would literally let Google be my best friend. And I would literally go to Google and I would say, what is a metaverse? How to how do I participate in the metaverse, you know, and you would start seeing things like some metaverses, you don't necessarily need an Oculus to participate. Maybe there's a certain website that you can go to to be a part of someone's metaverse. Maybe there's a link that you can click in order to enter into someone's metaverse. Again, being part of these conversations where they're talking about these things, like in discords, for example, or on Twitter, where the people, the NFT people gather, it's very important. Now on Twitter, they have this, you know, thing where they, they do these talks and they're impromptu and these people go on and they have all these discussions. You can be part, a part of these discussions and then you could find out how to uh, get involved in other people's metaverses. This is very important that we are present uh, when these conversations are had so that we have our education. I love it. Somebody said, kind of like, where is Black Twitter? Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. looking around and I didn't see it. <laughs> right. Is there a link or? Yeah. <laughs> but I definitely feel like, you know, I'm, I don't know how you all feel, but I definitely feel like I'm starting to get to the point where I'm like, my parents like, child, where is it? Where the link? Like, <laughs> what's the website? <laughs> you, me. you can't come over here and teach me something. And so if you are feeling like that, I don't want you to feel like like you, my mama age, but still yeah. the information exists and it's getting the information piece by piece. And I, I was saying before we started, it's so often that we just, if we don't understand it, we're like, mm -mm, I ain't gonna do it. And that's why you might sway away from just investing overall. You might sway away from business ownership or investing in real estate or whatever it might be. And if you have this ability in you and this money-making ability in you, to take a minute to say, wait, I can learn this. Mm -hmm. This is different. It's new. Mm -hmm. I learned how to drive. I learned how to ride a bike. I can learn this too. Um, even if you don't know how to drive or ride a bike, you can learn this too. But <laughs> you can learn this too. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, there are a host of, of opportunities within this space that extend far beyond NFTs. You know, I, I know melanated hosts that they host NFT events. You know, and and uh, I mean, so we're everywhere. You know, we don't have to just be limited to one area. The key is that we need to get what's the, get in where you fit in, <laughs> and 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 get in now. And 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 you know, even if you don't understand something, it's okay because you know this is the beginning of it. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of confusion. And there's a lot of change that's happening regularly. This is the perfect time in order for you to be educated about it. So you want to start joining discords. You want to start joining Twitter. You want to start following NFT people. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm Goddess Moon ETH. That's E-T-H, honey. There are people who own, you know, real estate in the uh in the Web3 space as well. So, you know, I'm I'm telling you guys, this is the time to be involved. Now, for those who own real estate in the metaverse, like, I mean, are they getting a deed or <laughs> <laughs> old school way of thinking? I'm like, well, what? how do we know where they live, where they own? 
<laughs> yeah, it's so crazy because this is uh, essentially it's a different world. And so it's really hard to wrap your mind around it. And yet, yeah, I would imagine that there's something that they have maybe a digital representation of what a deed would be within their space that secures ownership. But nevertheless, yeah, there are people who own real estate in the Web3 space. You know, there are stores in the Web3 space. There's um, billboards in the Web3 space. There's marketing happening in the Web3 space. You know, there's neighborhoods within the Web3 space. There's people who have clothing lines within the Web3 space. So there's essentially anything that you could possibly imagine within this world is going to be in the Web3 space. And I'm here to say it today. Now, are there any tangibles? So are you so like your person who um, is making tea or what have you? And so now they're like, oh, I have these great mugs. Are there ways to then get the tangible piece of the virtual that you've purchased? Absolutely. Absolutely. There are companies that have gotten really creative with with uh, their offerings. And so even though they may have something digital online that gives their gives their customers entry into a Web3 space, they also have something that's tangible. So you can easily send your customers something that they could physically touch, hold, feel, smell, all that good stuff. And that could be a bonus to what you do. Oh, I love that. No. And then in terms of like, when we're thinking of things to sell and things to put out there, are there any limits? Are there any things less like, oh no, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't be great in that NFT space. Yeah, I feel like as long as you have your, you know, shipping and handling down, let's say, for example, if you're going to be sending people something physical, um, as long as you have that situated, then you ought to be fine. I think what you want to do maybe is research certain what kind of art does well, uh, what kind of art sells well, what kind of digital assets perform well within this Web3 space, because maybe that might influence what type of art you create. But essentially, you know, you can do what you want to do within this space as far as uh, having the creative, um, the skies are the limit possibility. Oh, I, lo I love the potential and the thought process. Are there people who are like retiring from their day job and being full time NFT artists? Yeah, this is happening. This is happening and we're seeing it. Um, again, people are flowing in different arenas within this space. You know, some people are becoming promoters. Some people are becoming hosts. Some people are finding different gaps within this particular subgroup. It's like a subgroup. For example, NFT people like to party a lot. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but nerds, us nerds, we... <laughs> We get down, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, I don't know where I was going with that. But the point is, you know, you want to be involved in this space and, and you want to get in there and you want to have fun um, with whatever you do. And the key is to have fun while you do it. And I'd love to, so you brought it up a couple of times in terms of like the NFT events. Are these physical virtual events? Like, where do you find them? Um, you know, oh. how do I say I want to go to an event tonight? And oh. Where would I go to find those? You know, because this, again, being in the NFT space and being in the Web3 space is almost like being underground in a way because it's not something that most of the population knows about. That's why you can't find the link and this, that, and the other things. So there are virtual events that are taking place that I've been invited to by people sending me links and saying, hey, my friend has a, you know, this art gallery online and I would literally go into the virtual art gallery and all of a sudden I'm in this virtual space. Uh, there are physical events that are happening within the Web3 space, just like you know the different conferences and things that are taking place. I have gone to a virtual um, art gallery, but you know, it was you go to a park and you type in a code on your phone and then you scan the areas of the park and then you could actually see the art on oh your phone. God. Yes. So there was <laughs> there's like so out of this world to me. <laughs> I, I, 
I know it is out of this world, and and that's why it's super. Uh, it's important for us to, you know, to have fun and investigate this. And that's a good point too, in terms of is this international? So is this something that you can get people that purchase from you in, you know, the UK, in Kenya, as someone, you know, another purchaser in Brazil? Like, are we seeing that kind of international interaction? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is very international, which I feel like is is critical because it opens the door for the world to participate. And we're seeing that, you know, uh, even, you know, the different talks that I've gone on, the last talk that I participated in, and uh, one of the panelists was from Germany, another panelist was from Mexico. So, I mean, we're seeing people from all over the world participate in this, and that's really exciting. And then in that case, are there any issues with like a language barrier? So if you're saying this is a great opportunity for me to have an international business, do I need to know 15 languages or is it an easier way to communicate or show off what I have available for then these other people to purchase? And then, of course, if we're using crypto, there's no um, exchange in terms of currency, um, but it's just kind of marketing in these different environments. Well, that's a very good question. Um, and I feel like, you know, and it's a unique question because no one has ever asked me that yet to answer it. Yeah, I think on one hand, of course, you know, if you don't understand someone's language, then that could potentially be a barrier for you. Nevertheless, the NFT community is really unique. And what I see people coming together and doing is using this metaverse language, is using the NFT language. And that is how they're able to communicate because everyone everyone understands these, this terminology no matter where they're from. You know, people know about ETH, people know about NFT, people know about metaverse etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, what you're essentially seeing is this uh vocabulary that's created from this community and we're all using that particular vocabulary now where do we find this dictionary of words <laughs> <laughs> that exists. it's like okay i want i want to walk into the party and not sound like i don't know what i'm talking about where do, what are some key phrases? What are some things? Where should we start? Where do we need to find out? Like, okay, I don't want to look crazy when I go talk to all my new nerd friends. I need to be in the know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a very good question. I would start with drbthomas.com because um, on that particular website, I uh, lead you to the NFT course. And in that NFT course, there is a glossary of terms, uh, which is critical because, again, you know, the way that I educate is I like to break things down. If we don't understand the, the terminology, it's going to be very difficult for us to, you know, maneuver in this world. And so I feel like that's critical. Now, if you didn't want to do that, of course, you could go on Google. You could look up um, NFT terms, you know, and you would find a lot of different terms that you could learn just by looking on Google. Okay. I love it. I'm like, I got to know. I got to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Especially when you hear something, I don't want to be like, I don't know what that means, but I don't want to be the person to ask. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. There's, there's so much, like I've even gone to, you know, something called hackathons where you essentially you sit down with coders who create NFTs. They create the codes to create NFTs. So there's a whole uh, terminology there. Uh, it's all very exciting, again, because it's new and this is an opportunity for all of us to learn. Now, so step one, so someone's going to leave here today and they're going to say, all right, I'm going to sell something. I'm sell, I already I painted this picture yesterday. I got these stick figures. They are really cute. People are going to love these stick figures. And so what would be their step one, their step two, their step three? They have something that they love. They have something that they think people might want. Is it they need to, you know, get out there on Twitter? Is it sign up on Discord? Is it open an account to um, accept crypto? What are kind of those first, second, third steps that they should do today? Ooh, that's such a good question. Well, I would have to say that step number one is to identify your why. You want to identify why, why, why are you doing this, you know? 
because if you know why you're doing something, it's going to help to motivate you during the times where you don't want to do it anymore. And if you know why you're doing something, then that'll help you get gain direction on exactly what you need to do and how you need to go about promoting this thing. So I would start with identifying your why. Then I would start by identifying your target audience. Your target audience is key. Who am I selling this to? Who wants this? Why, and why do they want it? You know, otherwise you, you might find yourself in a sea of other artists. And so you want to make sure that you stand out by knowing who you're talking to, which means that sometimes you can't talk to everyone. You need to be specific about who it is that you want to serve. And also, I feel like you need to know uh, what message you want to give with your art. What is, what is it that you're trying to say? What is the message for your target audience? What is it that you want them to know? Because again, it's beyond just creating an art piece. For example, uh, one of my clients, she's a Latina. And one of the message, messages, messages that she gives is that anything is possible. Anything can be done. The sky is the limit. And so she ends up doing a lot of presentations in addition to performing her art. So again, you want to have a message. Now, in addition to that, you need to know your archetype. You need to have a brand. These are all things that are very important. And you would say, well, I just want to create art. But at the same time, I'm talking about how to stand out, you know, versus just creating art and getting lost in the shuffle. And then after you kind of started meditating on these things and brainstorming these things, you want to participate in Twitter. You want to get yourself in, involved in different discords, which you will learn about as you start following people, NFT people on Twitter. And also, uh, there's other platforms as well that you'll learn about as you follow people on Twitter that are very critical to um, where NFT people like to hang out. So it's like kind of joining a secret club, if you will. So you want to get involved in those secret clubs. Yeah, I would start there. That's a lot in itself. So everybody, go go get your community. <laughs> and then are there any rules? Are there any, you know, size limits or type of art limits? Or, I mean, when I'm thinking about things that are just like, because when you said things that would help you stand out, are there things that people are doing and it's like, yeah, nobody cares about that. Or, you know, you're, you're not going to get much traction there. Are there things that people are doing that kind of put them in the category of plain, boring vanilla versus something exciting? Absolutely. Absolutely. But you see this everywhere. You know, there are people who may do the bare minimum and, and, and want the most. But then there are people that go above and beyond that go beyond just creating a piece of art that actually give back to the owners that, that own their art regularly, that pour into their communities, that build their communities. There's people who create other communities. They create DAOs, which is essentially another community within the Web3 space, and they make a difference that way. So I feel like NFTs, it's that's simply getting your feet wet. You know, that's just getting started, and yet there is so much more. I love it. Now, I know we are just about out of time. So definitely, if you have any questions, be sure to jump those in the chat. Somebody said nerds rock. Because yeah. <laughs> hopefully you are thinking and the wheels are turning and you're like, OK, I do a little something great. You know, I have one or two things that I really know that the world wants, needs, desires. Um, and then how to put those because I was I had never even thought of like a book or um or like a mug or something like that. So people who are educators and they're creating this very original type artwork or very original type coursework, that could be an NFT. And I, I mean, I never, never even thought like, huh, I didn't think that was. <laughs> I know, I know. Isn't it amazing when you think about it? Literally, just like a mentor of mine told me when I was getting into the cannabis space, he, he said, what what uh, the, the things haven't been created yet. There are things in this space that have yet to be created. I say the same thing within the NFT space. There are things that have yet to be created. In other words, sky's the limit. Now, you mentioned, and uh, we talked about, and we might have been just talking about the cannabis industry <laughs> as a whole, but yeah. you talked about professionals in this space. So somebody out there is saying, I don't necessarily know if I want to be an NFT artist, but I do practice law. Is this an avenue I can go in? 
or I am a CPA, is this an avenue I can go in? And, you know, all these other things, how would one then say, okay, I want to be in the community, but not necessarily an artist. What would that path look like? Oh, it would look kind of similar to that um, of an artist in that you need to be involved in this community. You know, one of the things I talk about in my book, <laughs> Expect Effing More, is about networking and how critical it is to network. So if I was an ind ind individual that was interested in maybe working within this NFT space, I would again be involved in Twitter. I would follow NFT um, popular NFT people on Twitter and I would start engaging in a lot of the conversations that are being had because there are job opportunities that come up all the time. Just in, you know, my time of being in this NFT space, a few of my friends, they have went on and, and gotten into this platform and now they have jobs within this space. Oh, wow. So I know. I sign up and now I'm like, I got to follow some new people on Twitter tonight. <laughs> yes, yes. Make sure you follow me, Goddess Moon Eve. And then you could just look at the people that I follow and you can follow some of those people as well, because those are people that I have met in the NFT space. Me going on Twitter. I only went on Twitter for the purpose of connecting with NFT people. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not just all the retweets and the craziness and the foolishness, but you can actually learn something while you're out there too. Right. Um, so definitely, I'm 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 follow you tonight. Get some more information, learn some stuff, so I don't sound like my mama. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, my mom. Every time I explain, she's like, "What? Who?" But then yesterday, she was like, "Oh, your dad saw a movie about the metaverse, and I thought about you." <laughs> Now I'm like, where, what is that movie? I'm like, I need to watch. I learned something. I, I hope y'all ain't feeling like me. Like I'm behind. People know way more than I know. And I feel like I got to get caught up. <laughs> well, that is okay. Again, you got, you want to participate in a lot of the events, the NFT events. If you see an NFT event in your area, they're doing a conference or something like that. You can go and you can be educated. You can have that that time to to get immersed within this industry and it is okay that you know you don't know everything i don't know everything that there is to know about nfts i no one knows everything that there is to know about the web3 space because it's new yeah and then i um, i know we're up against time last question in terms of web3 are there changes updates things to stay on top so once you get your feel like you got your arms around a little bit are we anticipating a web four? Oh, there's always changes that are taking place. You know, like remember uh, the dot com boom, and you know, remember when it was one eight hundreds, and all of a sudden it was dot com. Then all of a you know, so I think we're constantly evolving, and I think the technology is just going to go above and beyond. It's going to continue to go above and beyond, especially as we start talking more about uh, AI technology, artificial intelligent technology, which is currently really growing within in, in social media and growing within the Web3 space as well. There are AI, there's AI technology there. There's AI that are creating NFTs. So... <laughs> Oh so, my yeah. God, a whole level of it, just additional information to learn and put your arms around. <laughs> yeah, we need that mind, that meme, that mind blowing meme. Boosh, that's what we need. Yes, I'm like, okay, tonight, Goddess Moon Eat on Twitter. <laughs> Start to follow some new folks. Mm -hmm. um, and then just kind of see what's out there. And hopefully, if you all have any additional questions, you're going to go to drbthomas.com. That's right. And that's b-e-e-thomas.com. And then you're going to get the course, just the one hour course. Mm -hmm. um, and check that out, get some more information. But also, I know, Dr. B, you have a YouTube channel too. I do. You can find me at Dr. B Speaks on YouTube and also on Instagram as well. I'm all over these internet streets. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much, so much information. So I hope that you all are like me. And if you if you like me and you were like, listen, I only know a teaspoon of information. I hope y'all are up to like a tablespoon. <laughs> 
And you're going to use some of this information to get up to a cup pretty soon. Um, and I want to say thank you so much for being with us tonight because so much good information. And once again, this is an avenue that we need more Black faces in. or We need more Black income to be derived. Uh, we need more Black millionaires in this space. And it's going to take, one, understanding what exists out there, but also knowing where you can fit in as well. So I want to thank you so much for being with us. Somebody said a thimble. <laughs> Girl, we're going to get there. We're going to get to that cup. <laughs> That's good. We're going to get there. And so I want to thank you for being with us tonight. I want to thank you so much, Dr. B. This was such great information. And I'm going to go out here and see what I can find out. And I hope y'all go out there and see what y'all can find out, too. And if you have additional questions, of course, just reach out to Dr. B. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you. Y'all have a good night. <laughs>